Their life expectancy in 1900 in America was 47. And today it's close to 80. And in, uh, at the end of this century it will be uh, about 85. So another, another five years gain. Uh, that's good, but there's something perhaps odd with this graph, and that is that all the big gains happened last century. <coughs> that is, we're only going to gain, well, we're going to gain less than 10 years this century, but we gained 30 years last century. So everything else is speeding up. You would think that now things would really take off. That now we should, this century, we should really make some advances. So why isn't it that we are expecting to add 90 years? This century seems to be a ceiling. And what we're doing so far is we're helping people reach that point, that ceiling. Well, we're not changing the ceiling. So there can't be much more gains than the ones projected of about 10 years or so, once, once we have, have gotten uh, as far as we have. So what is the ceiling? So the ceiling is, what has proven to be the ceiling so far is 122 years. So Jean Camon lived uh, for 122 years, um, and she lived, uh, uh, she lived an ordinary French life. She smoked for 100 years. She only quit because she, she became blind and she couldn't find her life. You should not, uh, like her, smoke. You should not drink too much. You should not eat too much. You should have regular, uh, low, low level kind of exercise. You should have friends and so on. We, we know what is things that will allow you to stay healthy for a long time until you die, but it doesn't really change very much uh, the, the fundamental, uh, the fundamental uh, longevity. Here's uh, our friend, the, 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 the Greenland shark again, who lives 500. And I, I told you, it lived, it lived three times as long as the white shark. And still, it's the same size and has the same lifestyle. So it can't be the environment. So it must be something in the nature of this shark that determines how long it lives, right? <coughs> or what if we could find that gene? And what if we could find that gene and do something about that gene, right? And so this is Cynthia Kenyon. Uh, she's a researcher. Uh, now she's working for Calico, uh, which is California Life Company, which is funded by a little company called Google. She mutated the gene in a little worm, and it made that worm live twice as long as other worms. Just one, one gene. So it was like a switch. Now we double. Right. And since then, uh, similar, uh, similar interventions, genetic interventions, have, have yielded results in, in mice and other animals and to, to prolong, prolong their lives. Um, now, uh, we are not interested in creating uh, extremely long-living uh, worms and mice, but it's the idea, of course, is that since we share so much uh, DNA with these creatures, uh, maybe this could be applicable uh, on, on human beings. So uh, there is another way uh, that is, uh, has proven to work on uh, rhesus monkeys, but also cats and dogs and cows and uh, mice and rats and all the way down to yeast. And that is calorie restriction. You restrict the calories while you still make sure to get the nutrients and thereby you extend the lifespan beyond the, uh, the natural limit or, the, or the, the normal limit. So this is the answer, this is your lunch today, this is your dinner for the rest of your life. Uh, how does that feel? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna live a long life and this is how you achieve it. So, well, most people say, that's, that's, I, I, I'd rather die early than live and live like that, right? And so, um, what they have been uh, uh, looking into is whether they can create a, a pill that you take that fools your body into believing that it's in calorie restriction mode. So, it tricks the body to think that it's on calorie restriction diet while you still eat the way you want. 
So here it is, the pill, uh, you take it and then you can live to 120 and beyond. Your, your aging slows down, right? So you're healthy longer and then you die. But you don't die until you, you, you've hit 120 at least. It's not impossible, right? How many here would take that pill? Can I see that? Can I see how many? Can you raise your hand properly. It's interesting for my research. Yeah. More, more. Can I see? You would take this pill, all right? How many would not take this pill? Fantastic! Fantastic! All right. So this group here, they rather, you, you rather age and, and die in the natural way, mostly. There is something that you could call the wise view. The wise view. And the wise view says that um, the finitude of human life is a blessing for every human individual, whether he knows it or not. Uh, and I call it the wise view, uh, because it's what philosophers normally would say uh, when asked whether they want this kind of life extension. And so there are various reasons given. So one of the big reasons that probably is in your head is that we should add life to our days, not days to our life. And John Bon Jovi puts this really nicely in a song. He says, I don't want to live forever. I want to live while I'm alive. I don't know if you know that song. Um, so another thing that you might say is that life is well lived, is long enough. You should just live it well. A poet says that death is the mother of beauty. Death makes us take life seriously. We need a deadline to be motivated. Uh, if we had an uh, infinite amount of time, we would postpone everything. You know how, how it is with deadlines, right? You need the deadlines to get something done. If you just move up death, you'll accomplish not much more because you'll just uh, not be, be motivated enough. Um, other people say that without death, we would be eternally bored. And uh, some think that it, it's kind of selfish to want to live uh, that long. And uh, uh, this last is from a, a quote from a, uh, a bioethicist. I think the quest for immortality is a narcissistic fantasy. It's not about what's good for society, that there will be some, some bad societal effects. So, so these are... Uh, many of the, the serious reasons and, and, and the philosophical justifications for why it's actually better to age and die than to do something about it. But if this here became a practical choice, I think that good reasons for thinking that perhaps few people would actually resist this. I think in particular if other people start taking it, what if your family and your friends take it and they wonder why, why don't you want to be around us longer? What do you think could happen on a social level? It might be good, let's say it's good for you to live longer. What could happen on a social level that could be a bad effect? Yeah. Yeah, you could say they have so much to lose <laughs> that they, they'll be scared to leave the house. So, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what else could happen if everybody took this pill? Or almost everybody? Yeah, that's possible, right? So overpopulation, of course, is when there are more people than resources. It's not just that there's a lot of people, but there's a lot of people relative to the resources available. If you look at this graph, remember the, the life expectancy graph, the shut up, the hockey stick graph? Well, this is also a hockey stick graph and it matches in time as well. Uh, people live, uh, started living longer and world population shut up. So it took us all of history and prehistory, millions of years back, to reach uh, a billion people on this planet in 1804. How long did it take to double that? Hundred years to double it. So it took millions of years to reach a billion people. And it took 100 years to double that. And now how many are we? 
7 billion people. We have 7 billion people. 7 billion people. So this is, of course, um, a worry that, uh, that's an old worry. Uh, Thomas Malthus uh, wrote that population, when unchecked, increases in a geometrical ratio. Subsistence, on the other hand, increases only in an arithmetical ratio. You can get here uh, an, a moral argument against taking the pill, and it would go something like that, th like this. Increased lifespan causes increased population. Increased population causes overpopulation. Overpopulation seriously harms people. It is wrong to seriously harm people. <coughs> Increasing our lifespan is morally wrong. And therefore we have a duty to die. It's a moral argument. And so if you look at the moral premises, free overpopulation harms people, it's a harm. Four is wrong to seriously harm innocent human beings. And therefore increasing a lifetime is morally wrong, we have to, to die. Well it seems to follow. So if we have to look at something here in this argument to see whether it's a sound argument or not, we should probably look at the first two premises. So let's do that. This is the projected growth of the world by the United Nations. And it's supposed to reach 11 billion at the end of this century. And then it's supposed to level off. This is the medium, uh, medium pro uh, projection here. It's supposed to level off. Now, why is it supposed to stabilize around 11 million? Because the rate of growth has been slowing down. The rate of growth has been slowing down. <coughs> and so, when you look at the various regions of the world, you will see that only one region, Africa, is actually projected to grow significantly. We are projected to gain another 10 years in average world life expectancy, about five years for countries like the US. We're going to live longer, and still, we're not projected to grow. Why, why is that? It's because of the fertility rate. It's about how many children you have. So fertility rate is what's driving growth of the population. It's not the mortality rate. It's not how people die. It's how many children people have that's really driving population growth. And this is pretty obvious. If you have two people and they keep living, how many people do you have? <laughs> two people. If you have two people who have eight children, who have eight children, right? get married, have eight children, and so on. You have hundreds of people, right? So, having people living longer is not a significant driver of population growth. This is Japan's population projection. Now, do people live long in Japan? Yes. It's the longest living country in the world. And they're projecting to become smaller not growing, becoming much smaller, right? So according to the UN, they're supposed to lose a third of the population this century. But according to their own research, they're supposed to lose two-thirds of their population. They're going to go back to 1950s level population, right? or before that. Right? So here we have the country with the longest living population, but it's actually shrinking rapidly, right? And that's because it doesn't matter so much how long people live. What matters is how many children they have. So, uh, what about these projections? That could you could you almost say that that longevity, that is how long people live, actually predicts that they will uh, uh, grow slower or even stagnate? Yes, you can. The reason for that you, you might call uh, modernity. Part of the reason is that when women have more choices. Not all of them want to have a lot of children, but they want to do something else with their life, perhaps. So it has a lot to do with what we call modernity. If we now, today, had all of a sudden, let's say, wake up and we have 120 years of life, life expectancy of growth, starting to, tomorrow, 
we would only add 6% to the projection for 2050, which can be easily offset, offset to just a, a couple of percentage points drop in fertility. Now, there is another part of the equation, uh, and um, that is resources, right? So overpopulation means too many people relative to the resources, but of course, uh, we get better with resources. So water and food uh, is, uh, for, uh, at least for the developed world, not uh, a problem if we're not growing incredibly rapidly, which we probably won't. And energy is something that we're working very uh, much to improve. So this car is an electric car. It ha it, it's running on solar cells. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's cross Australia. There are also resources lost, right, when people die. All the knowledge they have, right? And so here's an example. This is an inventor. He's 94 years old. He invented the lithium battery. And now he's working on a new battery. We're, we're lucky that he got to live that long. But a lot of uh, very brilliant people don't get to live that long. The old population argument then seems to be uh, answerable. You could say that the problem is that although increased lifespan could cause increased uh, population, it's not really the main driver. It might contribute a little bit, but it's not a significant driver of uh, population growth, fertility is. And increased population causes overpopulation. That's only true if we don't become more efficient with how uh, with our resources, but well, we will become more efficient with our resources. So the overpopulation argument is very popular, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, so persuasive. And so this is, of course, where it all began. We were created to be immortal in paradise, and then, of course, there was that fruit from the tree of knowledge. But now, uh, that's, of course, how death entered, right? But with that knowledge, we can perhaps defer death a little bit. And that's the end. All right, thank you. All right.